at Trump's rally on July 13th continues to get crazier and crazier and crazier. With every new bit of information that is released, it continues to conflict with previous information that we were given. When this incident first occurred, news and media were dropping multiple names. First, they said it was a name of Mark Violets. Then they said it was Maxwell Yerick. Then news and media said no, it was Thomas Matthew Crooks. Then they went back once again and said it was Maxwell Yerick. Then they made the final decision by saying it was definitely Thomas Matthew Crooks. From the very start, there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of flip-flopping. News and media started to wipe articles where they said it was Maxwell Yerick but some articles had still survived. They are going with the fact that it was Thomas Matthew Crooks because investigators went on the roof where the suspect was firing from. They collected DNA that same day and that same day, almost a couple hours later, they got a hit back, they got a name back. That name being Thomas Matthew Crooks. Even though Thomas Matthew Crooks has no history, he has no record, they would instantly get a match on the DNA. But the one thing everybody needs to be talking about is the white van. This white van seen parked in front of somebody's home on the day that this incident occurred. Fox News would interview the homeowner where this white van was parked. He said police came out, they investigated the van, they jumped back. There was explosives in the van and they towed the van away. Street. So then you knew this guy's car wasn't supposed to be there. Walk me through what you saw. So I came home a little bit before five. So I parked there. Didn't really think too much of it. It was the only spot in the whole yard or the whole road that wasn't blocked off. So later on in the night, everything happened and we got home and we were sitting there and saw cops all lined on the street. So whenever we looked out, we walked outside and saw them opening up his vehicle and everything. When the cop opened it, everybody else jumped back and was trying to stay out of the way. Here I am worried about it blowing up or whatever's going on. This white van they say belongs to the suspect, Thomas Matthew Crooks, has Arizona license plates. The only problem is Thomas Matthew Crooks, he lives in Bethel Park, Pennsylvania with his parents. He does not live in Arizona. So some people have pointed out that when you rent a vehicle, they can have the license plates of other states, such as Arizona. The only problem happens to be investigators jumped the gun once again and said, Thomas Matthew Crooks drives a Hyundai Sonata. This Hyundai Sonata, this car, was found at the rally, and this car had explosives inside. So then what happened to the white van with Arizona license plates, which also had explosives inside? We don't know. News and media instantly swept that under the rug you will not find another article that contains any information about the white van. What is Thomas Matthew Crook's connection to Arizona? We don't know. Did he rent this white van? We don't know. But there is an individual who was name dropped in this incident that does have a connection to Arizona. That person being Maxwell Yerick. Someone else on Twitter found the whole Maxwell Yerick connection to be kind of strange as well. Something was not adding up, so they did a little digging on Maxwell Yerick's history, and they found the name of his father, his father being Roger Allen Yerick. Come to find out, Roger Allen Yerick lived in Arizona. That is correct. This person found the Arizona connection. Maxwell Yerick's father has a previous address residing in Arizona. Not only that, this is where things get crazier. This person on Twitter did some more digging and found that Roger A. Yerick owned a 1999 GMC Safari, which is a van. This is absolutely mind-blowing information. Even if Thomas Matthew Crooks rented the white van, why did news and media omit this? Why did they sweep the white van under the rug? They said everything that Thomas Matthew Crooks did that day prior to him going to the rally. They said he went to a shooting range. They said he went to Walmart. They said that he went to Home Depot. So where is the information of him renting this van if this van is a rental? There is only one news article about this white van. You will not find any more information about this van. This story has been swept under the rug, but this van is the most vital clue that Thomas Matthew Crooks is either one, he was involved, 
but he was a patsy. He was a lookout. He was the person to distract everybody. Or once again, which I believe, they got the agendas crossed. They were always building up the agenda to involve Maxwell Yerick. They were building up the narrative to involve Maxwell Yerick. Here is Maxwell Yerick on the news being arrested after assaulting police at Trump's rally while he was protesting Trump. This is what they do, you patriots! This video shows Maxwell Yerick being taken to jail. Investigators say he tried to fight an officer who had just been pepper sprayed. This is what they do, you patriots! This video sh Where was Maxwell Yerick arrested? What rally? The Butler, Pennsylvania rally back in 2016 where Trump was giving his speech when he was running for president. The same exact rally where he was shot in 2024. You can't make this stuff up. They are too deep into going back and name dropping Maxwell Yerick now because they said they collected Thomas Matthew Crook's DNA at the scene. So you cannot reverse course and say the suspect was Maxwell Yerick when you told everybody you collected Thomas Matthew Crook's DNA. Thomas Matthew Crook's, I always believe, was going to be involved in another incident, in another agenda, in a school pow pow agenda. This is why everybody they interview who is connected to Thomas Matthew Crook's happens to be from his high school or happens to be from when he was in middle school. All the photos they are showing us of Thomas Matthew Crooks are not recent. They are showing us photos of him back when he was in school. Why are they not interviewing anybody from his place of work? Why are they not interviewing anybody from his job? Did he know anybody ever since he left high school? Everything has to do with school when it comes to Thomas Matthew Crooks. Nothing makes sense. My question happens to be, if Maxwell Yerick is not involved in this incident, and I'm not saying he is, I'm just raising some questions because news and media happen to name drop him. I am just raising some questions. All the photos that have come out, the suspect on the roof, the deceased photo, all look like Maxwell Yerick. So I'm just raising some questions. If Maxwell Yerick is not involved in this incident, why is Maxwell Yerick not speaking out? His name is being floated around news and media. It is circulating around news and media. News and media are saying that it's misinformation to label Maxwell Yerick as the person behind this incident at Trump's rally. So why isn't Maxwell Yerick himself speaking out? Where is Maxwell Yerick's social media? It seems like all of Maxwell Yerick's social media happened to be scrubbed. A person actually captured Maxwell Yerick's Twitter being scrubbed in real time. Not only can we say does he look like the person on the roof, but now we have the Arizona connection. Now we have the connection to the van, which news and media oddly are not talking about anymore. Now we have the fact that Maxwell Yerick does not have social media. Well, they said the exact same thing with Thomas Matthew Crooks. He has little to no social media presence. Maybe one 20 year old might not have social media, but two, what are the odds that two young men have no social media whatsoever? This is absolutely wild. They got two agendas across or like everybody else is saying, there was two people involved in this incident, perhaps multiple people. We never know.